In this video, we are looking uh, at how the simple linear regression model can be used to make predictions. Um, so, as always, or as you've seen in the past couple of videos, we're going to base this on the example where, on the one hand, we've got four uh, hypothetical CFA candidates taking the level one exam. X is the study time as measured in weeks, Y is their respective exam scores, and when we run uh, this data uh, through the calculator, we get the following uh, regression coefficients, as, we, as you saw in previous videos, me performing. Um, that was the intercept of 20.9184 and a slope of 1.4986. And in just the previous video, um, we, we also did an ANOVA table using uh, data that was, you know, compiled over the last couple of recordings. So, what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to think about a potential, a possible forecast of a candidate score. Um, that's what I mean by prediction, or what your curriculum means by prediction when using the SLR. After all, this is why we do it. Um, let's say a candidate has spent, uh, or plans to spend 30 weeks um, of putting 30 weeks of study time, uh, and we're wondering what's the possible, what's the potential score they may get. Well, um, what would our linear regression predict? Um, we've got an intercept of 20.9184, so that's the score you you would be expected to get even if you don't do any studies, and that's our slope, 1.4986. So, our prediction for Y hat um, forecast is going to be uh, 20, let's see, 0.9184, that's the um, significance of the intercept, plus the slope, which was 1.4986 times 35, uh, you know, the slope times the uh, predicted x, uh, sorry, the forecast x value, x forecast. So, uh, let's put this into the calculator, 20.9184 plus 1.4986 multiplied by 35 gives 73.37. Uh, I guess I guess that's the uh, predicted score. But so that's our forecast. But you would be rather foolish and unwise, or it would be foolish to just say, "Oh, the score is going to be this much." No. Um, what we can do is we can build a certain interval around the um, predicted value, a so-called prediction interval, um, in which we expect the um, actual score to be with a, you know, with a certain amount of probability. And that's what we're going to do now. In order to do so, we need to compute something called the standard error of the forecast. Now, I don't think you'll have to do it, but you may be given this and asked to apply. So this is called SF. You may also be given uh, SF squared, so sort of the variance and square rooted in order to compute the actual SF. And this is not the nicest formula in the world. It requires SE. Um, this is something you should know from the previous video, the um, the, uh, the standard error, okay, uh, of estimate um, multiplied by. I'm opening a really big square root symbol here. One plus one over n plus x f, which is the forecast value for x minus x bar, which is of course um, the mean value of x squared divided by the sum of all the deviations of x from um, the mean value squared. Uh, okay, now <laughs> I know it looks ugly, but you know, here, there you go. If you ever face 
the necessity to compute this. And of course, your book does have examples of this, um, but I don't think you'll have to do it. Remember that SE, this term over here, is simply the square root of MSE. This is something we uh, mean square uh, mean square error. This is something we did in the um, in the in the previous video. So this is thirty one point fifty nine. Let's put that under a uh, square root symbol, and we've got our first input. Now, multiply this by 1 plus 1 over um, n. n is the number of uh, observations that we had, simply 4. Then, let's add xf. Well, x is the study time in our regression. So if I'm trying to make a prediction, a forecast concerning what score somebody would attain if they put in 30 weeks of study, that's going to be my uh, XF over here. So that's 35 minus the mean value for X. Now given that I've got all the values in my calculator, I can easily uh, go to the data uh, worksheet and see what X bar is, 31.75. Obviously, if you're not given the data, you would need to compute this on your own, but it's easy. Just compute the arithmetic mean of all the X, um, of all the X values up here. That's 31.75 is the arithmetic mean, simple average of these uh, numbers. And we divide by this. These square, the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. And, okay, uh, once again, this is why this computation is, I don't think it's very re realistic that you'd have to do it. Sorry, let's not lose track of this square sign because it involves a lot of work. Let me just show you that we already in the past calculated this term over here in the video on the hypothesis test of the slope coefficient. Okay, the sum of those squared deviations from the mean, and it was actually this 456.75. That's what, what it was before taking the square root. 456.75. Okay, 456.75. And now let's um, actually try and do this computation. So, where are we? Um, I'm going to start off with the end <laughs> over here, go from right to left. So 35 minus 31.75 equals, uh, okay, square this, divided by 456.75, good, equals. Um, right, let's now add 1 over 4, which is 0 0.25, and add 1, okay press the square root button, and multiply this by 31.59 square root equals, okay, as you can see, the answer seems to be, sorry, wrong pen, again, 6.34. That's the standard error of the forecast. Now, as I said, I think it's likely that you're going to have this provided because with it, you can do a really, really important thing. Um, build an interval, a prediction interval, around um, this point estimate, 73.37. Uh, there are just a few steps still left before we can actually construct that interval. You always, in statistics, <laughs> inferential statistics, need to, you know, provide uh, or um, give yourself or indicate a level of significance. I'm going to use what your book uses most of the time, and that's an, a level of significance of 5, but that's going to give us access to a 95% prediction interval. So you will be able to say that we are 95%, you know, sort of, um, there's a 95% probability that the value uh, of the true um, y, the actual uh, candidate score, is within that interval. 95% prediction interval. Okay. And in order to do this, we need to, as always, get some critical values. Now, um, you have to go to the t-table, uh, student's t-distribution, 
and locate with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. In our case, you know, n is 4, so 4 minus 2 gives 2 degrees of freedom. You need to um, go there and locate the cutoff points. So here's my um, t distribution. Uh, over here, 2 degrees of freedom. These are one tailed probabilities, and because my significance level is 5, and this, you know, an interval involves going both to the right and to the left. We're looking at, a, you know, a two tailed uh, exercise. So I'm going to look over here where I've got 2.5% probability in uh, each one of the tails. And as we've seen before in previous videos, that critical value is 4.3. So let's head back to the original note. The critical values are therefore plus minus 4.303. Oh, okay, we can now combine all of this into our 95% prediction interval. Okay, interval. It's going to have at its center, the output from my regression model, which is a point estimate of 73.37. But I'm going to go up and down relative to that 73.37 by 4.303, which was my critical value, multiplied by well, by this uh, standard error of the forecast, 6.34. That's why I computed it, right? So essentially, you end up with something that can, um, using proper notation, be described as uh, y hat forecast, uh, so the output of the regression model, plus minus the critical value from the uh, t distribution um, with alpha divided by 2 or the significance level divided by 2 we had 5% but we used over here 2.5 so that's 5 divided by 2 multiplied by uh, our uh, st you know standard error of forecast so our SF hmm. 6.34. Okay, okay, so what's the actual um, interval? Well, you know, with, um, I can say that I'm 95% sure or confident that the actual y value will lie somewhere between 73.37 minus 4.308 times 6.34. So that's the lower end, 46.09. The upper end is 73.37 plus 4.308 times 6.34, okay, which is 165. That's unrealistic. You can't score above 100%. <laughs> My model's imperfect. It doesn't have a, an upper limit. Um, can't go above 100, but you know, Hopefully you get the idea here. Now, just a few uh, theoretical comments. SF, so the standard error of the forecast, depends on a couple of things. And let's just look at the formula. First of all, the value taken on by SF is a function of SE. Okay, and um, that's the standard error of estimate. And the relationship as follows. I mean, if you can get SE down, remember SE is one of the um, measures of the goodness of fit. So if you've got a better fit of your regression model, the more, you know, the better it is at fitting to the data, uh, the less, uh, sorry, SF you'll get, uh, standard uh, error of forecast you'll get, and you'll be able to create uh, more narrow uh, prediction intervals. Another 
everything that this is uh, this outcome over here is going to be dependent on right is the value for n uh, and because we're adding one over n we ultimately want to add the smallest amount uh, so if n is higher then sf becomes um, becomes smaller uh, making our our um, prediction intervals once again more narrow uh, as simple as that what else I think the most interesting aspect here is the value of xf uh, or xf minus x bar so this is xf uh, in relation to x bar when uh, we are doing a forecast for a value of x uh, that's the independent variable in our case this was study time which is closer to x bar this term in the final um, uh, the final term under that square root sign simply becomes smaller uh, right we had 35 minus 31.75 but we had, if we're doing a prediction for something like 50 uh, weeks of study well then that would become very big indeed especially as we square it so when x uh, xf is closer to x uh, we get a lower outcome for um, the standard error of the forecast and finally uh, you know there's also the variation of the independent variable that's uh, x because that enters uh, over here into the bottom of that final term of that fraction and uh, the more variation there is the, the the less things are clustered around the mean value essentially that also helps bring sf down because it's in the denominator of the relevant fraction making that you know if you, if, if you make that term higher due to the higher variation or higher deviations from the mean you're going to make that final term lower which aids sf uh, to become lower and this is what you want you want as low an sf as possible or you want to bring sf down because that will make your um, prediction intervals a lot tighter uh, my mine is very wide it doesn't really give much predictive value but obviously that's probably mainly to the fact due to the fact that I'm only relying on a couple of very a couple of observations just four